Last time on Out Chasing Stars. Our exploration of the Maldives began in earnest, with a stop in at Uthimu and a visit to the palace of Muhammad Thakarufanu, the first Sultan of the Maldives. We also mixed the good of the Maldives, a beautiful deep anchorage with abundant sea life, with the bad as we suffered through more bureaucracy trying to get some fuel. That's the cruising life though, and we set out in search of more of the good at a unique place that was for our eyes only. How are you doing up here, babe? Peachy. What are you doing up here, babe? Uh, just reading and navigating and digesting we, lunch. So, you know, big plans. We don't have a wharf behind us, so that must mean we're moving again. We are moving, yes. So what's, what's going on? Well, now that we are fully loaded with fuel, we are ready to roll. And we got up early this morning and took off slow flights right over there and we are headed to another D island and it has an abandoned resort on it this is according to the report from 2015 there's an abandoned resort so we'll uh, hopefully drop anchor and see what's what as the 2015 report says that there are staff living on the island despite the fact that the resorts not open so, we'll see what happens. Sounds like fun. And uh, not much wind out there today, yeah? No wind, um, but that's fine. Um, I'm looking forward to getting on anchor and going for a swim again. That seems to be kind of a common theme in the Maldives. Yeah. This island was supposed to be the location for the Zitali Resort. The resort was scheduled to open in 2011, but went bankrupt. It was up for auction in 2019, but the new owners have their work cut out for them. We have just anchored down somewhere kind of cool. Uh, there in the Maldives, there are a ton of these resorts that have just kind of taken over some of these little islands and atolls. Um, usually they're not very friendly for cruisers. Uh, they don't want us ruining the ambiance, I guess. But uh, this one never was finished. So we have found ourselves all alone at an abandoned resort. So that is pretty freaking cool. Um, it is a little tricky anchoring here. There's an inner lagoon that is about 90 feet deep. We tried to anchor on the shelf here that's about 25, 30 feet deep. Uh, but there's a few bombies around, so Amy is out there snorkeling and uh, making sure that we're um, free of our swing room for them or that they're low enough we won't hit them. And uh, yeah, so once she gets back, we'll see if we're going to be able to stay here in this spot or if we need to try to find another one. How's it all looking out there? Sorry, what? How's it all looking out there? Well, good news is that the colored darker patches are um, concentrations of dead coral. So they're very low down. Um, it's just basically spots where the sand hasn't covered the coral yet. And bad news, um, this whole area is pretty much dead coral covered by the fine layer of sand. So that's why we had trouble digging in. Um, our anchor tip is down in sand and it looks like it's hooked on some rock. Um, it's not great, but I think it's okay. Um, I checked Kimmy and Trevor's anchor with them, it's the same. You know, the point is buried in and basically hooked on rock and we both back down on the anchor, so... Got the anchor alarm set, shallow. Anchor the, alarm uh, set. The wind won't be very high, so even just the way the chain should keep us... Yeah, and right behind us is a drop-off, so like the anchor alarm is going to go off. We will have time, so I think we're all right. Cool. Well, come on up. Have a shower. You've earned it. A big, long shower and then some air conditioning.
We made it through the night. Our anchor held no problem. So now we're off for our adventure here on this island, which is to visit this abandoned resort. From what I understand, the resort was never finished being built, but the staff still lives here. So we're gonna go check it out. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of an interesting day. Very interesting. We have made it on the island. It is, it's a little weird, kind of creepy just being in places where all the buildings are definitely abandoned. Creepy was a good description, but it was also quite sad. Sad to see what should have been an elegant resort lie broken and unused. There were no locks anywhere, so we had the run of the place. We found wiring still hanging down, just waiting to be connected. The bungalows had pools that were tiled and ready for guests, only to have turned into boggy swamps. Even parts of the resort that had been completed were already starting to fall apart due to neglect. There were signs that told us what each building was supposed to be, which only made us more disappointed, as there were several services we would have enjoyed using. What did you find, babe? Well, I picked some plumeria. So, can't get your uh, mani pedi and massage here, but at least we can get a few flowers for you? Yeah. Looks like this place would have had a water sports center and we've even seen a, a sign for like, a dive school. They've got the tanks for kind of washing wetsuits and tanks and stuff like that. Um, would be kind of nice if they were open and they could fill our dive tanks for us. We have finally found the main restaurant in here. Um, I think it'll be pretty easy to get dinner reservations, but it looks like this would have been a really cool place. Closed. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna get your GNT there today. Nope. Wow. Well, this had potential to be a really cool restaurant. Yeah, yes it did. Resorts in the Maldives are famous around the world for their over-the-water bungalows, and Zitali would have been no different. There were a lot in the lagoon where we'd anchored, and we weren't going to let a little thing like non-existent docks stop us from getting out and exploring them. This may not be my wisest decision in life to be walking out here on a dock that hasn't been finished, but uh, it's not crawling underneath us so far, and it's just, it's too much of an opportunity to pass up to get out to these overwater bungalows. Did I finally bring you to a overwater cabana with a pool, babe? Right. This is what we've been missing in our life, clearly. I mean, um, well, you know, it's um, not quite as fancy as in the brochure. Uh, nope. I'm gonna say we got scammed. <laughs> Fortunately, we're paying the right price, huh? Yeah, we are paying the right price. 
<laughs> we have a pretty great view from our boat, so I'm okay with that. Yes, indeed. It was fun to imagine what it would be like to stay in one of those bungalows, but it's pretty hard to beat our life aboard Starry Horizons. At this point, we'd toured most of the island, but there was one thing we hadn't seen yet, the staff. So what's back here? So we think this is the staff quarters and there's a couple of guys here who, they say there's only four people living here. Um, I think there's more. We saw four people at least yesterday, but I think maybe some people come from other islands here to fish or whatever. So the guy, these two guys are Bangladeshi and... Basically just responsible for kind of basic upkeep. Yeah, I guess so. So... So back here in the staff quarters and it looks like they had the supplies almost to finish the whole resort. There's just a bunch of tile, paint, wood, all kinds of stuff back here. And uh, they must have just like one day said, nope, we're done, everyone off the island and leave because uh, it sure looks like supplies were here, could have finished and opened up. That looks like a whole bunch of teak wood behind you, Trevor. It's an insane amount of teak. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, do you need to refinish your boat or anything? Like, no, uh, I just need a bigger boat to haul this away. <laughs> Sounds like definitely <laughs> a good plan. <laughs> oh, it's incredible. Back and We are headed back towards Little Dipper now. What did you think of the abandoned resort? I thought it was really interesting. And it's just like bizarre how it was never finished and everything's just rotting away. It's very, very strange feeling to be in a place where you know no one has come to stay before and uh, like, yeah, the only people we're gonna visit here other than the, I guess the four guys who are kind of maintaining it are us cruisers. Yeah. And I'm guessing we're a big rarity. <laughs> we just got back from our abandoned resort adventure and what's in the water now? We got some dolphins visiting. Aww. Yeah, they're really close too. Almost tempted to jump in and go swimming with them. I was thinking about it. They're moving pretty fast though, aren't they? And that would be outfit number three of the day already, so... <laughs> we may not have jumped in after them, but still, a special day deserves a special treat. I tried something new today in the galley. When we were in Ulagamu, I went to one of the local's houses and she taught me how to make roshi or roti and it is a very thin Maldivian flatbread that they serve with like curries and basically they served it at every meal we attended. Uh, so that was an interesting challenge. Um, it is just flour, oil, a little bit of salt, and hot water, boiling water actually. And then you have to roll it out really thin. And I use my rolling pin slash wine bottle Fancy, I fancy. Because <laughs> I don't have a rolling pin. Um, but I was surprised how well I was able to roll it out because you have to roll it really thin. And then you just pop it on a hot pan for a few minutes each side and then it's done. And it looks okay. It smells really good. Yeah, um, that's what brought me up here. Yeah, so um, I think my dough was a little smidge too dry. I should have put more oil in. But um, this is just one part of dinner, and then uh, we have another special treat. I do like those words. <laughs> You're snitching my roti. Yeah, I couldn't wait, but um, damn, you? that's good. <laughs> it's good? Yeah. Oh, good. It's a little funky shape, but... Um, you know what? As long as it tastes delicious, that's what I care about. And, um, <laughs> Thumbs up. Sweet. Thank you, honey. More for me. Our dinner is called Mas Huni, and it is a Maldivian dish that I'm serving with our roti. So Mas Huni is actually a breakfast food, so we're having breakfast for dinner. Oh, that's my favorite! <laughs> 
but what it is is a, a, a tuna salad with fresh ground coconut, onions, and some chili peppers all mixed together. And then we're rolling it up in the roti like a little burrito. I mean, a little bit of the uh, Tex-Mex flair there, huh? Well, it's pretty delicious, so I'm pleased with it. Well done, babe. Thank you. Done exploring the abandoned resort, we left in the morning for our next stop, Bodu Faru Fenohu. Because the Maldives straddles the equator, the weather is typically still and hot, which means there's a lot of motoring required. So we have to find ways to entertain ourselves. Okay. What's going on, babe? Well, we lost lure already today, but our friends have pulled in two fish. So we're hoping maybe we got lucky here. Finally caught something. Maybe. Still a bit of tension on the rod up there. Yeah, but not a lot of fight. Maybe we caught some seaweed or something. Or trash. Mm, I'm thinking trash. Oh. No, maybe not. He's so little. Oh, that deck is hot. He looks a little small, huh? He's small. Oh, come on. Sorry, buddy. You can you get it or you need some help? He's like, I have had enough of you, let me out of here. Well, yep, okay. <laughs> well, we caught a fish. Caught a fish. The charts in the Maldives are pretty unreliable, and the entrance into Bodu Faru Fenolhu showed us sailing over land. We had to use satellite images and a good watch to make our way in, but what a spot it was. We enjoyed two full days of snorkeling, but we really needed to start making progress towards Malay, where some friends were flying in to meet us. We had time for two last stops along the way. The first was at Thuhadu, which is part of the Ba'a Atoll. 
We are on Tea Island today for a little bit of adventure. Uh, Kimmy found another cultural destination for us, which is this island that is famous for lacquered wood in the Maldives. So we're gonna go try to find shop or a museum or something and try to learn about this part of crafts in the Maldives. We looked but couldn't find a dedicated shop but a friendly local invited us into his home where he had a small workshop with an electric lathe. Here he showed us how he carved the wood before applying lacquer and polishing using dried coconut fronds. That was pretty fascinating, but the Ba'a Atoll is probably better known these days as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve for its resident population of manta rays. And wouldn't you know it, one of them decided to visit. Next, we made a brief stop at Rasfari Island, where we had an unusual visitor to our underwater lights, a mantis shrimp. Our final stop for this leg was Himafushi Island. This island is in the North Malay Atoll, just north of the island of Malay, the capital. It was significantly easier to anchor here than deal with the additional bureaucracy required to sail to Malay itself. With all the motoring we'd done, we needed to get diesel yet again, so we organized a jerry can fill up from the fuel truck that services the island's tuna fleet. Now that we were ready to cover more miles, we took a ferry to Malay. It was there that we picked up our friends for our next adventure in the Maldives. Hey y'all, what did you think of that abandoned resort? I thought it was absolutely fascinating to get kind of an inside look behind the whole island, see everything that almost was finished but just abandoned. It was absolutely wild to see and definitely a unique experience on our entire trip for sure. Now, it's no big secret that our videos are behind. We're trying, but as we're filming this, we're in the beautiful Recife, Brazil. After we leave Brazil, we're headed to the Caribbean, and that's going to be the end of our circumnavigation. Feels, feels a little strange to say, but if you guys are in the area, we are planning a party and celebration in St. Lucia on April 10th. I'm going to put a link down to our Facebook invite below. If you're around or would like to come, we would love to celebrate with you. It's been so much fun sharing this journey along with you guys, feeling like you're there with us. It'd be great to have you celebrate the entire circumnavigation as well. Now, if you can't make it, don't worry, we're still putting out the videos showing the rest of the trip. It's just going to take a little while, but we'll get to them, we promise. So, be patient, enjoy the videos, and we will see you all next time 